They say Miata is always the answer, but what if I told you that it wasn't? Hello YouTube, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again, and before we begin, yes that's right, vote Clarkson t-shirt, just because. Anyway, the other day I was thinking about the video I made with Exhausted, where if you haven't seen it already, we took a ride out in his Mark 1 Mazda MX-5, and he tried to kind of pitch it to me, to sell it to me in a sort of Dragon's Den type style, and I have to say, I was won over by the little Mazda, and I can totally see the love for them, as I mentioned before in the video, my dad used to own an MX-5, so I totally get the love for Mazda's little roadster. Miata's are incredibly, incredibly popular. Everyone and their mother seems to have a Mark 1 or a Mark 2 MX-5 that they're modifying, they're building for track use, drifting or whatever. And that got me thinking, what if you want a small fun sports car for not much money, but you don't want to blend in with the MX-5 crowd? So I trawled the classifieds so you don't have to, to find some cheap and awesome MX-5 alternatives if for you, Miata just isn't the answer. The first MX-5 alternative for me is quite an obvious one, and that's the Toyota MR2, but not necessarily the generation that you might be imagining, because I'm choosing the third generation as my MX-5 alternative. The Mark 1 is really cool in the kind of 80s wedge shaped way, the Mark 2 MR2 looks really 90s and the turbo version in particular is awesome, however neither of those were true convertibles, they were target tops. Now before you say anything, I know they did do a Mark 2 MR2 convertible, but you try and find one, especially for MX-5 money. On the other hand, you can pick up a Mark 3 MR2 in the UK with a 1.8 litre engine for upwards of a about a thousand pounds. You're going to get two seats, a mid-engine 1.8 litre VVT with 138 brake horsepower and 0-60 in 7.9 seconds which makes it faster than even the fastest Mark II MX-5s if you discount the Mazda Speed Turbo version. You're also going to get a mid-engine balance which of course you didn't get with any shape of MX-5 and you get the bonus of it being a proper drop top like the MX-5 also is. The MR2 Mark III is commonly neglected on the second hand market what with the Mark 1s going up in value now they're a classic and the Mark II's going up in value now they're all rotting away and gradually becoming hard to find a good one whereas the Mark III's are just really easy to find a good one for cheap. That is what we call a proper second-hand hero. Would I buy one? Absolutely I would. I like the way they look. There's loads of options for modifying them and making them look cool. The MR2 Mark III, also known as the MRS in some countries, might not necessarily be my favourite shape of MR2, but as an MX-5 alternative, a cheap two-seater drop top with very similar performance, but means you don't get labelled an MX-5 hairdresser, I think the Toyota MR2 Mark III is an absolute bargain. Next we move on to a Miata alternative better suited to those of us living in the UK or certainly Europe and that's the MGTF. Yep, those of you living in America might not even know what the MGTF is. This was old MG's last proper car. This continued from the mid 90s right up until about 2007 I believe, which means there's been a long model run and these things can be picked up for a steal. Like the MR2, it's a mid-mounted 1.8 litre engine in a two-seater soft top convertible chassis, 0 to 60 in around about 8 seconds. I've chosen the TF over the slightly older and slightly cheaper regular F models for a number of reasons. They're more modern so there should be less rust hopefully and second of all they look nicer. They've got a facelifted front end with sharper headlights and in my opinion a slightly nicer nose on them and a slightly nicer rear end which I suppose you'd call an arse lift? Either way, the TF models have got a slightly more modern version of the 1.8 litre engine and because they've got additional bracing, better suspension and just all round better and sharper handling than the regular F, I think it's worth splashing out another couple of hundred quid to get yourself into a more modern TF model. Which brings me on to the pricing. What we're getting here is a 134 horsepower mid-engine, two-seater convertible sports car for £800. And it's different, it's alternative, you don't get labelled an MX-5 driver because you've got something a bit different and a bit quirky. Now, don't don't get me wrong, it's not all sweetness and light with the MGTF. For certain models with the 1.8 litre K series as it's known is very very commonly known for head gasket failure. So for God's sake if you are going to buy one, do your research, check the cooling system, make sure there's none of the infamous mayonnaise in the coolant cap and make sure the car isn't about to explode on you. They are also prone to rust so check the arches, check the seals, check all the usual bits you check on an MX-5 actually. Another thing to check is that the drainage channels are clear.
engineer because if you didn't know, most soft top convertibles, be it MR2s, MGFs, whatever, have got little drainage channels around the outside of the soft top so that when it rains, the water runs down the side, goes down these channels and straight down to the ground because obviously you can't sit on the car. However, over time, if these channels aren't cleared out, all the grit and mud and leaves and road grime clogs up these drainage channels and if they stay clogged up, the water obviously goes down them but can't flow out of them so it stays in there and it rots the car from the inside out and it kills MX-5s and it kills MGFs and it kills a number of convertibles so for God's sake check the drainage channels. If you're careful though and you can buy one with a good engine and a good solid shell, what you've got in the MGTF is a quirky alternative car that's every bit as quick as a Mark 1 or Mark 2 MX-5 and is cheaper, just as smile inducing and will give you that bonus that at every car meet you'll probably be the only one there to be rocking one. The next MX-5 alternative is a little bit more pricey but in my opinion it could be worth it for the extra badge kudos you get. It's the Mark 1 BMW Z4 and I'm specifically talking about the 2.5 litre version. Why am I talking about the 2.5 litre you might ask when there was a 3 litre version? Well it's very very simple. As I speak right now you can snap up a 2.5 litre BMW Z4 Mark 1 for around 2.5 grand or less in some cases. If you know anything about what the prices of E36 is and obviously E46s are gradually going, you'll find the Z4 is actually more of a bargain than you might think. You're going to get 192 horsepower, 0-60 in 7.5 seconds, and a top speed of 141, faster than any factory MX-5 we got in Europe. And the good points keep on coming, because the BMW with the 2.5 litre, of course, has a straight 6, as opposed to the Mazda's straight 4. Put the best exhaust you want on an MX-5, it still won't sound as good as that classic BMW straight 6 raw. What's more, I think the first gen Z4 is starting to look good as well. When it first came out it was labelled as the ugly duckling of the sports car world and that the Honda S2000 looked sharper and the Nissan 350Z looked more aggressive but I think the Z4 has kind of had its coming of age and you get BMW's famous 50-50 weight distribution which means you get pretty much spot on handling right out of the box. Now various journalists did complain that it rode a little bit hard over some bumps but frankly it's a sports car, that's what it's all about and no one's really ever complimented an MX-5 for feeling like a Rolls Royce, have they? If you're looking for around £1,500 for a really, really good 1.8 Mark 1 or Mark 2 MX-5, you're going to have to add a fair chunk of change onto that to stretch to a Z4, but I think it could be worth it because, again, you really don't see that many Mark 1 Z4s when you think about it, and while your Mazda owners will be trying desperately to make their MX-5 sound decent with an aftermarket exhaust, your Z4 will have that beautiful Strike 6 howl right out of the box, and I think that alone could be worth the extra money. I'm not saying the Z4 is a better car than the MX-5, it's an alternative and that's the same with all of these cars here. I'm not saying that any of them is better than an MX-5, what I'm saying is if you don't want to be labelled a Miata owner at the next car meet you go to, these are three brilliant alternatives that still give you that two-seater convertible experience. My final MX-5 alternative is the uber quirky Fiat Barchetta. Front wheel drive, plastic, based on a Punto, mostly left hand drive and yet somehow brilliant. These little things are known for their sharp handling, Miata matching performance and I love their stylish and quirky design. And if you do buy one, you'll be the only person you know that will have one. You will need upwards of £2,500 to get into a Barchetta, but for their looks, fun drive, sharp handling, appreciating values and also Italian charms, it might well be the one that I choose. So there you have it, a handful of cars where if Miata isn't the answer for you, hopefully one of these will be. Now I fully appreciate that this isn't really an apples for apples comparison and a couple of these cars here aren't really directly comparable to an MX-5 but they all offer a similar experience. It's going to be just as easy to have some fun with one of these brilliant Miata alternatives. Thanks so much for watching everybody, I really really appreciate it. If you liked it don't forget to click that thumbs up button and also subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified when a new Miller Corner video is released and you can keep up to date with me and all the videos that are coming on all of my social media. But for now, thanks once again for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. See you soon and have a good one.